This film tells the story of a man named Caesar, who worked as a clubhouse attendant on an American baseball team in 1956. He was kicked out of his job just because he was not white. Mr. Tanner, the team owner, didn't want any non-white people on his team who had already entered the big leagues. Caesar didn't want his pride to be stepped on, so he chose to return to Monterey, Mexico. In short, he arrived in his hometown. Monterey is a small industrial town on the outskirts of Mexico and is far from being prosperous. Caesar was confused about what to do next if he decided to work at an iron smelting factory. However, because he was new, sometimes he was asked to do things that were not his job. He almost got into a fight with a man named Umberto who called him a failed baseball player. Caesar replied that Umberto would never feel like he had lost anything because he never had anything and only then he was told that a few months ago, Umberto lost his son Pedro who died after he slipped and fell while playing baseball with other children in the field near the ruins of the church. That was when Umberto became a different person. Because he was facing a difficult day after he was drunk, Caesar threw away all the baseballs he had saved because he couldn't possibly return to the world of baseball again. In short, one year passed. The children there really liked playing baseball. Even though there was no proper playing equipment, they could make it themselves with whatever materials they could gather. Their interest in that sport was thanks to a priest named Padre Esteban who often listened to baseball games on the radio. Even though they had never seen it live, listening to the game was enough to make them like it, especially a child named Angel. He fell in love with baseball so much that he became the best pitcher among them. Because they were close to Padre Esteban, these children were also active in church activities, especially in the choir. Umberto, Angel's father, often got angry when Angel practiced singing at Padre Esteban's house. He was emotional after Pedro died. One day, when Angel was late home, he was scolded and not allowed to eat dinner until he cleaned the pigsty. From outside, Angel listened to his mother quarreling with his father and asked his father to seek God's forgiveness. But after losing Pedro, Umberto was angry with God. Angel, who had listened to his father's words, was sad and chose to go to the ruins of the old church where Pedro died. Since Pedro died there, no children ever came to that place to play. Angel stayed there until the morning when he saw a baseball ball that Caesar had thrown away. He was happy to get the ball and he practiced throwing with it. Angel kept failing when throwing the ball to a bucket. Caesar got annoyed with the noise that the boy made, so he showed him the correct way to throw the ball. When Caesar saw the ball belonging which turned out to be the one he had thrown away, he asked where Angel got it from and told him to keep the ball. When Angel showed the ball to his friends, they saw it as a valuable item. It was only natural and all this time they only used lumps of rubber that they made themselves to play. This was the first time they held a real ball. Another day, Angel deliberately practiced in front of Caesar's place, knowing that Caesar could train him. Caesar was annoyed because Angel began disrupting his nap. Finally, Caesar agreed to play catch with Angel and finally, Angel found out that the ball he found was Caesar's. Angel was shocked when he heard that Caesar had been training with the Cardinals that played in the Major League. One day, Enrique, Angel's friend, showed his friends the girl he had a crush on. While talking to the girl named Gloria, some baseball players arrogantly said they would compete in America and ridiculed Angel and his friends who had never played baseball. After that, Angel met Padre Esteban to make his baseball team. Because he and his friends were already 12 years old, they were old enough to play in the children's league, but they needed a coach, so Angel asked Cesar to coach his team. Caesar, of course, refused, but then he saw a beautiful woman named Maria, and Angel said that he could introduce Caesar to her. The next day on Sunday, Angel took Caesar to the church where Maria was too. After that, Angel introduced Caesar to Padre Esteban, but what happened was not what Angel expected. Caesar refused his request outright because they didn't even have a field to practice. After listening to Caesar's answer, Angel and his friends didn't lose their hope. They cleaned the field around the abandoned church so they could make a field for practice, and after seeing the kids' hard work to get a place to practice, Caesar finally agreed to train them. Caesar then called Lucky, his friend, when he was at Cardinals to send him the sports service telephone number. Caesar said that he would train a team to enter the children's major league, so he planned to buy a license for the team. When he was coaching the children, he accidentally met Maria and had a conversation for a while. He then dared to ask her to hang out with him, but Maria invited him to come to dinner with her family at 7 that night instead. Caesar was so nervous that he accepted the offer. After that, Caesar continued his coaching when suddenly, a child named Fidel ran away from a man. That boy had a habit of stealing, but he could run fast, so Caesar was interested in recruiting him. In short, after recruiting players, Caesar invited them all to practice, but Enrique was shocked when one of the rich kids from the arrogant baseball team joined the team. It turned out that Caesar offered Garcia, the son of the factory owner, to join the team in exchange for his father buying them baseball equipment. The practice began. 
Caesar only had four weeks to train them, but Enrique and Garcia kept fighting and taunted each other. To give them a lesson, Caesar ordered them to run around the field. Caesar taught them that they were there as one team. One person's mistake would have consequences for all team members. Unfortunately, because Caesar was so busy training the kids, he forgot his dinner appointment with Maria. Of course, since he didn't come, Maria was disappointed. The next day, in the middle of training the children, Caesar was visited by Maria. Luckily, Mario, one of the kids, was there backing up Caesar and saved his day. Day to day, the practice showed progress. These children were already used to catching the ball well, had good physical condition because they often ran and were also able to swing the bat to hit the ball. Finally, for the first time in the history of Monterey, they had the first children's baseball team. On Sunday, Padre Esteban announced to everyone at church that Monterey had succeeded in getting a license to participate in the children's baseball league. Everyone was happy except Umberto, and he went as far as telling Cesar to stop giving Angel false hope that he could compete in the league. He wanted to be realistic. His family has been working in an iron smelting factory for generations and Angel would follow in his footsteps by working in this factory too. To cheer on his team, Caesar gave the kids complete baseball uniforms for their first game. When Angel left for Texas, Angel said goodbye to his mother, but his father still didn't seem to like his decision, there wasn't a single word of praise for him from his father. Their departure was accompanied by the residents there, and in short, they arrived at the border to continue their trip to Texas. They had to walk to continue their journey when they didn't get a bus. In short, when they got to the field, they all lay down and rolled on the grass because this was the first time they saw such a neat grass field. Their first opponent was Mexico All-Star, a team of rich, arrogant children. The match started, but after just getting one point, they looked so excited as if like they were winning the match. It was natural, because this was their first match, but after that, they played badly. They were nervous because their opponent was bigger than them, but Caesar knew how to encourage them. He called as the star players they usually hear on the radio. Caesar wanted them to think the team they were facing was not Mexico All-Star, but Mexico All-Loser. Somehow, after hearing that, the kids played so great they could turn things around and win the match. Enrique even managed to silence the arrogant attitude of the rich kids who insulted them by winning the match. Monterey ended up being the one representing Mexico in the match against the McAllen All-Stars baseball team in Texas the next day. Meanwhile, in another place, a newspaper office in Texas led by someone named Mac Thompkins ordered one of its journalists named Frankie to cover a children's baseball game. According to him, their match might become interesting news. The next day, an hour before the match, Caesar invited his team to practice hitting the ball. They were mocked by the spectators. When the match started, Angel was assigned to be the pitcher. He did his job so well that not a single player from McAllen could hit the ball, but when it was their turn, they managed to hit the ball and continue to score points without stopping. They massacred the opposing team with a landslide score. Frankie reported news of Monterey's big win and Tompkins told her to keep covering their story. At the motel, Caesar immediately planned a strategy for their next match. Before the match started, they took the time to practice. During the match against Westlaco, they again slaughtered the opposing team with a landslide score. After the match, Padre Esteban reminded them that their visa was only for three days and that day was their last day. Meanwhile, Maria was disappointed again because Caesar was supposed to have dinner with her family. Caesar didn't expect that his team would compete longer than planned. In America, these children had to receive racist treatment, they weren't even allowed to enter the toilet because they weren't white. At that time, they ate at a restaurant and happened to meet Houston All-Star, the opposing team. At that time, Enrique was surprised to see one player of the Houston sitting alone. Angel felt sorry for the boy, so he decided to accompany him to eat. Angel's action was followed by his friends. When Caesar was going to pay for their meal, the restaurant owner refused to charge for their food, and in exchange, she doubled the bill of Houston's coach because he was racist towards his own team member. The news of Monterey's victory against some teams in Texas became the headline in the newspaper. This news reached Umberto, yet he seemed uninterested and refused to read it even though Angel's name was mentioned there as the MVP. The match against Houston All-Star was no less annoying for the Texans. They couldn't believe a poor baseball team from Mexico could beat their team. Because of this victory, Monterey continued their journey to Kentucky. Umberto finally read the news about his son's victory. When they arrived at the dormitory, they got a letter saying that Monterey was invited to see firsthand the production of baseball bats at a factory in Louisville. At that time, they were given a surprise by being presented with two players from the Cardinals who would sign their bats, but Caesar was really upset because these children were insulted after the star players said that Mexicans were nothing but handymen who washed uniforms for the American team. Luckily, these kids didn't understand what they were saying. That night, Caesar was escorted by the police from a bar because he was drunk. When he arrived at the dorm, Padre Esteban immediately scolded him because there was no way he could appear like that in front of the kids. Caesar immediately said that he was annoyed at being called a Mexican. He was honest that he was not a player of the Cardinals, but a clubhouse attendant. 
At that time, the American police asked about their papers. Caesar was forced to be honest that their visa had expired. The police ordered them all not to go anywhere and would be sent back to Mexico. Padre Esteban said he would contact the embassy in Mexico to take care of this, but Caesar chose to just go home rather than be defeated in Kentucky. Padre Esteban didn't want Caesar to bring down his team's mentality and wanted to let the children try. The next day, the police returned, ready to send them back home, but through the police radio, the two police were told to cancel it because their visas had been extended but only for nine players and one coach, which meant that Padre Esteban had to go home, leaving Cesar to take care of the children alone. In short, before their match in Louisville, Kentucky, the team members went on strike because they didn't want to compete before being blessed by Padre Esteban. The problem was that Padre Esteban had gone home. Finally, one of the ground staff on the field, Papa Bell, came to help. He called his nephew from the church named Clarence to bless the team. Papa Bell wanted Monterey to shut up the mouth of the racist coach of the Biloxi Louisville. The arrogance of this coach was also noted by Frankie, who came to cover the match. After being blessed, they were ready to face the opponent. Before Angel hit the ball, Papa Bell told Angel about the opponent pitcher's habits. This information made Angel successfully hit the ball. That day, Biloxi was defeated. Meanwhile, in Monterey, Umberto went home with a heavy hangover. He was still mourning for Pedro. He regretted his treatment towards Angel. On Sunday, Padre Esteban invited the people to donate money or anything that could help Monterey. At that moment, Padre Esteban found the necklace that Pedro usually wore, meaning that Umberto handed it over so that Angel would know that his father had now supported him. In Kentucky, Clarence brought his wife, Rose, who kindly asked them to hand over their uniforms for her to wash, which was unexpected. They also got support from the good people there. After that, Caesar asked them questions as usual, and if they couldn't answer, they would be told to run around the field. On the other day, Monterey faced a deciding match. If they won the match, they would advance to the World Championship. They scored point after another, and in the end, Angel as the pitcher ensured victory for their team, even though the ball was hit, it was easily caught, and the game ended. Clarence and Papa Bell were very happy with the team's achievements. Papa Bell even went so far as to rally donations from his church for them and handed them over to Cesar to help their journey. Not only that, Clarence was also willing to take them by his church bus to Pennsylvania. Frankie was also on board the bus so she could continue to cover their story. Caesar, on the other hand, kept asking them questions and would tell them to run if they failed to answer it. When they arrived in Pennsylvania, they were all surprised by the American habit of throwing coins into the pool and making a wish. During the press conference, Caesar brought Fidel to the front. Their two delegates from Mexico were also present. One of the journalists asked whether the team had undergone a medical test, and the staff said that a medical test had been carried out. Monterey was indeed a little shorter than the other teams. Fidel was teased about his height, but he managed to answer with an answer that shut the journalist's mouth. After the press conference, the delegates from Mexico asked Cesar to play Angel as the first pitcher, but the problem was that his team had a rotation system, and the next game would be Enrique's turn. They said that no foreign team had ever made it to the final round, so if Monterey won, he would make history. Considering that, before going to bed, Caesar told Enrique that he would play Angel in the next game. Hearing this, Enrique was disappointed because Caesar didn't think that he was able. Angel, who heard this, didn't agree with Caesar's decision. On the day of the match, Caesar sent his team to their positions and Enrique was told to become a pitcher. Caesar realized that he didn't have to listen to the requests of the delegation from Mexico. The delegations asked why Caesar decided to play Enrique as the pitcher, but Caesar ignored them. He asked the referee to send them both away. At that time, Caesar was shocked because Mr. Tanner came to watch the match. He still remembered the time he was fired from his job. It turned out that Mr. Tanner was there to invite him for business because he managed to create a miracle. Before the match started, Caesar called all his team. He admitted that when he was at the Cardinals, he was not a coach or assistant coach, but rather a clubhouse attendant whose job was washing uniforms, preparing equipment, and so on, but the kids didn't care about that. In fact, they wanted to focus on this match. In this opening match, Monterey faced powerhouse sport from Connecticut. The score chase between these two great teams was inevitable considering that this was a world championship. In Monterey, the workers in the factory were prohibited from listening to the match on the radio by the factory supervisors. They couldn't say anything about it. During the timeout, Caesar encouraged Enrique who looked insecure about his opponent's greatness. Caesar reminded him that he was one of his greatest throwers and he wanted him to believe this. Everyone was not sure that Enrique could do his job as well as Angel what he proved everyone wrong. Because of Caesar's success in bringing his team to the final round, Mr. Tanner invited him to speak next week. Angel, who knew about the offer, was surprised that Caesar still wanted to deal with the person who had kicked him from the Cardinals, but Caesar said that this was what he was looking for. Not money or a job, but respect from other people. 
One night, Angel and his friends collected coins from the fountain and then asked Frankie to send a letter. Frankie helped them without charging them anything, and so they returned the coins they had taken. On August 23, 1957, the final match would be held in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Before the match, as usual, Clarence would bless them with their favorite verse. Caesar also gave a motivational speech. They had fought from the bottom up to the final match, so whatever the outcome, they were the best team that had never lost. People would talk about them from now on. A team that came from an industrial area where children play baseball with tree sticks and balls made from lumps of rubber tires. Meanwhile, people in Monterey also gathered to listen together on the radio. At the factory, Enrique's parents asked to take time off from work and attend the hearing together at church, but they weren't allowed until finally, Umberto stood up for them. He didn't care if he was fired, he would still go to church to listen to the match. The workers followed him and the factory was empty. Not only in Monterey, the final match caught the attention of many people, including border guards, restaurant owners, and the staff where Frankie was working. At the match, Maria came and brought her father. It turned out that the letter the kids sent was to Maria without Caesar knowing to say their coach's love story. Before the match, Angel said he had never thrown a ball in front of 16,000 people in the stadium, and that made him a bit nervous. After that, Caesar was met by someone from Mexico. He delivered an envelope from Padre Esteban containing money from donations from people at the church and a necklace from Umberto for Angel. The match began. Monterey would face West La Mesa. Both were undefeated teams. In the final round, people said this was a David versus Goliath match because of the difference in body size. In the match, there was a duel between pitchers from both teams. Both Angel and the pitcher from the opposing team managed to make not a single batter get to the first base. Even in the fourth round, no one yet managed to score a point. Some of the balls were hit, but the defenders of La Mesa and Monterey were equally good at catching the ball, but in the fifth half, the opposing player made a mistake so the ball hit Ricardo's body. Baltazar was told to cover for Ricardo to get to the next base. The task was carried out and Ricardo was able to enter second base. Cesar told his players to hit the ball as hard as possible, and Garcia managed to hit the ball to the side so that Ricardo could go to the next base, but he failed to get a point. Enrique entered the field as the next batter, and after failing to hit the ball twice, Enrique succeeded in hitting the ball so hard he had a home run. They finally scored a point and Monterey was leading. Next was the decisive round, and it all depended on Angel. If he could thwart the batters from hitting the ball, then they would win this match. Cesar forbade the team to talk about Angel's perfect throw. There was a myth in baseball that it wouldn't be a perfect throw if someone talked about it, so Cesar told them all to be quiet and trusted to Angel. The first batter was successfully sent to the cage after Enrique managed to catch the ball. The second batter was also prevented from getting to the first base after being stopped by Noberto. In short, after sending several batters to the cage, Angel's attention was distracted by the father and son in the stands. For a moment, he remembered his father who never supported him. His focus broke so he threw the ball too high twice. Cesar then asked for a timeout to talk to Angel. Everyone had high hopes for Angel, but Angel cried and said that not everyone had hoped for him. His father was ashamed of him. Cesar immediately took out the necklace from Padre Esteban and gave it to him. After getting the necklace and knowing that his father had finally supported him, Angel got back the spirit to fight. He managed to create two strikes, with only one more strike, and they would get world champion. Angel threw the ball hard and the batter failed to hit it, leading Monterey to win the match and become the champion. After the match, Maria and her father approached Cesar. Cesar was shocked after finding out that the kids sent a letter to Maria in his name. With that, he didn't embarrass himself in front of Maria's father, because he had broken his promise to come to their family dinner twice. After the victory, Monterey as the champion visited New York and was invited to the White House to meet with President Eisenhower. They returned to Mexico by plane. After arriving in Monterey, Angel was greeted by Umberto who apologized for making a mistake, because he blamed himself too much after losing Pedro. Angel later became a professional baseball player and joined a team in the Major League. His perfect game was the only one ever in the Little League World Championships. Enrique received a Living Well scholarship, but he was forced to leave school because he had to work to support his family. In 2008, Cesar and Maria celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary.